Hello friends! Today we are adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Remember, mixed numbers are fractions that are greater than one, and they generally are made up of a whole number and a fractional part. So to practice adding and subtracting them, what better place to do that than a bakery? The most important rule for adding and subtracting fractions is to have common denominators. Let's check out adding. If we have the problem 3 and 1 7 plus 4 and 2 7, we notice we have common denominators, so we can combine our fractions. 1 7 plus 2 7 is 3 7. And now we can combine our whole numbers. 3 plus 4 is 7, so our answer is 7 and 3 7. Sometimes we have to regroup. Let's take a look at this problem, for instance. 1 and 2 thirds plus 2 and 2 thirds. When we add our fractional parts, 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, we get 4 thirds. And when we add our whole numbers, we get 1 plus 2, which equals 3. But our answer is 3 and 4 thirds. 4 thirds is an improper fraction. We can rewrite 3 and 4 thirds as 3 plus 3 thirds plus 1 third. And since 3 thirds is one whole, that would give us four wholes and one third as our fraction. So our answer is four and a third. Let's try subtracting. Same rule. We need common denominators. In this problem, eight and four fifths minus two and one fifth, we can subtract four fifths minus one fifth, and that gives us three fifths. Then for our whole numbers, eight minus two equals six. So our answer is six and three fifths. Let's try a subtraction problem with regrouping. Three and two fifths minus one and three fifths. I can't subtract two fifths minus three fifths, so I need to regroup. I'm going to take one of the whole numbers from three, making it a two, and use the whole number to break it into five fifths. Combined with two-fifths, that gives me seven-fifths. Now I can do seven-fifths minus three-fifths. That gives me four-fifths. And for the whole numbers, two minus one, which is one. So my answer is one and four-fifths. Let's try word problem now. Maggie used ten and three-fourth ounces of chocolate chips in one batch of muffins. For her second batch of muffins, Maggie used eight and one fourth ounces of chocolate chips. What is the total amount of chocolate chips Maggie used for all of the muffins? For this problem, we would need to add three fourths plus one fourth is four fourths, and ten plus eight is eighteen. That gives me eighteen and four fourths, but four fourths is just one whole, so that's eighteen plus one, which is nineteen. So our answer is 19 ounces. Let's try one more problem. A baker prepares all of the dough for the day. The table below shows the amount of flour the baker used for each type of dough. The entire amount of flour the baker has is 25 cups. What is the total remaining flour the baker will have left after preparing all of the dough? First, let's calculate the total amount of flour that was used. For that, we would have to add all of our fractions. If we add the fractional parts, we get 3 7 plus 3 7 plus 4 7, which equals 10 7. And if we add the whole numbers, we get 5 plus 6 plus 8, which equals 19. So now we have 19 and 10 7, but we can rewrite that as 20 and 3 7. So now we know the baker used 20 and 3 7 cups of flour. Since he started with 25 cups, and we want to know how much is remaining, we need to subtract 25 minus 20 and 3 sevenths. We can take one of the whole numbers from 25, leaving it 24, and turn it into 7 sevenths, so that we have common denominators. Now we can subtract 7 sevenths minus 3 sevenths, and we get 4 sevenths. Then if we subtract the whole numbers, 24 minus 20, we get 4. So our answer is four and four seventh cups. You're now ready to get adding and subtracting. Remember the most important rule, common denominators. Have a great day.